Hey everybody, Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. Uh, I have torn apart the kitchen, I have ripped out all of the wiring inside the tiny house on wheels. I'll explain everything in a minute here. Let me get my headlamp on. Ripped out all the uh, charge controllers. Uh, you might have heard some noise in the background. I took out the inverter. Chris is outside using the air compressor and blowing that off. Uh, blowing in the dust out of the fans. I'm removing all of the wires from the house. Everything. There's only going to be two. Um, what is it going to be? Two six gauge wires coming into the house through that hole right there. And just that in the internet lines. Actually I might close off this hole if I have room and use that hole on the bottom where the uh, gas line comes through. And then this hole would not be necessary anymore uh, for the wiring. So we'll see how that goes here but you know if I have enough wires. So all this is going to be gone. Everything will be gone. I just got a couple little residual lines to pull out of here. Um, and, and change over a couple of that's internet lines and some sense wires from the batteries that are no longer connected. Um, I'll show you what's going on outside in a few minutes when I get out there. Right now I've got to reconnect power to the tiny house on wheels. Everything's going to be outside the tiny house from this moment forward. Everything will be outside except for this little fuse block and the uh, negative uh, power strip, the negative uh, ground terminal. That's all that's going to be in here from now on. Everything else will be outdoors. So, anyway, I've got to work on this, get these wires shortened and run out to the outdoors, connect to the battery bank, and get power back on inside the tiny house on wheels. At least DC power, for now, that is. Well, everybody, um, now we've got that hole entirely emptied. That is now a surplus hole. Actually, on the other side, the power inverter is where that hole used to be. Melanie will now have this entire kitchen to herself, nothing in the way. The only wire in here right now is the internet, uh, the modem wire, the green one, and the hot water line, which I need to insulate and tie up to the uh, white PVC pipe. And then under here, I'm just going to tidy up the couple wires. The one is a cigarette lighter. Uh, that we use in the kitchen and I'll tidy up the wires and that will be it. Uh, Melanie will have everything to herself here. So I'm going to take off their last little things in the walls and remove any little screws here and then we can pretty this up for Melanie and uh, extend her kitchen. That's really looking good in here now. And it's going to be really good by the end of the day. So let's go outside and see what's going on out there in on the other side of this wall. Hey everybody, uh, Phillips here. He's been working hard and uh, he's got all the solar charge controllers up on the wall. The uh, original Renogy is up and working. The Morningstar MPPT is up and working. The one that he brought me, the uh, 10 amp uh, Renogy MPPT charge co controllers up. I've got the, um, the uh, I forgot the terminology. I think um, it's a... BT BLS battery lifesaver yeah. is connected. We've got beautiful bus bars. All the wires are neatly done in conduits. We've all, now the BLS is clipped on temporarily because that's how it was made with battery clips. Uh, but I think I'm going to more nicely wire that. And then the meter from the Renogy we're going to mount on the wall. And we only have two wires coming down. With uh, When we're done here and clean this up, we'll only have two wires coming down to the battery bank. And you notice that the battery bank is now very nice and neat. There's nothing visible on top. And he has then also taken and put out a uh, sine wave inverter that you, you brought me. Thank you very much. Pure sine wave. The pure sine wave inverter we talked about earlier. Uh, one, uh, zero point six amps at 12 volts. That's crazy. As an idle consumption. I think this one was 100 to 150. Uh, Mine uses 200 watts. Wow. Which sucks. Yeah. I have to turn it off at 9 o'clock every night. Uh huh. Because if I don't, I'll It'll run my batteries, batteries down to 50%. Just the inverter. Just right. The inverter. Just the inverter. I actually put stored power in my refrigerators and turn them off by a timer. Uh, cold water. Cold water and ice water. Right. So I, I put a bunch of water inside of there, and so it's always got mass in there as stored energy. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, the temperature goes down during the day and at night it slowly rises but the amount of 
incoming power I've got will bring that temperature down dramatically. So mm -hmm. it's not really a big deal for me. I'm yeah. always in float and I never use all my power. That's good. But at night, I run out of power because my inverter uses a ton of power. Right. But I'm on 24 volt system because so I can't use this right. at all. And we will be able to use that for most of our power needs. And then the uh, the green one, which I've had for years, will then be used for bigger stuff like the air conditioner, which I don't use at night anyway, which is fine. I use it when the sun is shining, when I have excess power. That's when I'd want to use it. And maybe for some power tools and the induction cooker, which is also only during the day when we're awake. So now I've got a standard cooker, you know, one of the electric stove eyes. I've got yeah. two of them on a plate, and it's just it's a 1500 watt one, uh -huh. really cheap and inexpensive. And I hooked it up to my solar array, mm -hmm. so I can just plug it up to a wall that's convenient. Yeah, so I actually cook off the of solar too. That's that's amazing, that is amazing. Yeah, it's so really cool. He's wiring this all up himself. I only lend a hand here and there to help hold put a screw in or hold a device. So I want to give him all the credit. For all this, I've been inside ripping apart the wiring inside the tiny house, and that was all me. But other than that, he's done everything here, and it looks really good. This is a dream setup here for me. Well, I just try to do the best with what I can. Yeah, well, thank you. This is this is what I always envision having everything in one room, like everybody else does. Well, so thank it's you. Nah, so we're just gonna run yeah. that right through here, and then down. All right. Well, I'm gonna get out of his way and let him do what he's doing. So we'll yeah, talk man. to y'all later, everybody. Thank you. All right, y'all. Hey, everybody. One of the problems with having nature, all that black is from mice. And uh, this is going in the house, so I have to wash this entire line of wire, which was brand new when I got it, and uh, stored in a clean and dry shed. But the mice decided that uh, they wanted to walk all over the wire and they leave urine trails wherever they go. So, since this is household wiring, it's going inside the house to be used in the house, I've got to clean it. So I've got soapy water here in a rag. Looks like it's stained though. I might have to get some bleach out of here. Some bad stuff. So I've got to I think I'm going to add some bleach into this and get some rubber gloves on. The uh, wire is stained pretty good. But we're going to start wiring up the house inside. And I'm just going to keep running through this spool. Till I get it washed off, and I think I'll hit it again, like I said, with some bleach water. That way, it's safe before we take it in the house. Now, obviously, it's going to be running some homemade conduits. We talked about that a few times in the years, since I started building a tiny house and wheels. The wires will be run along the flooring of the house and then trim work and conduits will be built up around that so there's no holes inside the walls of the tiny house and wheels no interruption in the insulation and uh, we got very good seal in the tiny house and no weakening of the structure. I know some people obviously argue with drilling holes inside my walls. It's not something I wanted to do. Each chamber and the walls in my house are sealed off from the other. So in case something does get into one chamber and invade and infiltrate the interior of my house, they can't get into another without chewing through a 2x4. And then they'll get into some more rock well, which was from my understanding is unpleasant for them to chew on. So I'm just going to continue this on. You don't have to watch me do the whole thing, but I'm going to wash this whole wire up and then we're going to go and start wiring up the house. Well, I finished that wire and then 
I went and did this wire and that took me forever. That's about 250 feet of wire and I sat on a chair and unrolled it by hand and washed every inch of it by hand. But I got it. Now I'm going to bleach it a little bit to uh, make sure because it's going to be in the house obviously. And then we can start wiring inside the tiny house on wheels. Hey everybody, well the day is done and our time together is done. Uh, Philip is leaving. We have, or he has, almost entirely on his own. Chris assists it sometimes, I assist it sometimes. The inverter he brought that uses less power is going to be the main uh, power for the house. This one uses less power on standby. And that's going to be the main uh, power for inside the tiny house on wheels. The big one that I've had all along will be for um, air conditioner and uh, induction stove as needed. This one is run connected to the leads of this one, right, screwed in together. These big fat leads come on down and then go up into the battery bank. And if you go on over and check uh, Philip's channel, that is solar power, electricity, and electronics, you'll see how he wired this all up and how he made an extension for the battery terminal using the fuse block. Now this is now fused. So these are together fused properly. All right. The blowout on the fuse is, uh, well, the fuse is protecting the um, uh, inverters. All right. So we've got that, and then the negative all combined over here. I have to mount the meter over here later. Um, wires are nice and neat. There's nothing on top of the battery banks now. All nice and neat. And uh, there's. Uh, okay, I've got to redo the water pump. That was briefly connected so that Melanie had water in the house. Uh, we ran out of time, so that is how it is, but I will be connecting the water pump nicely, and you won't see any wire. So he did a very neat professional job. So you can go check out his channel over there and, and see all the work he did during his stay here. And uh, see how he wired this up, and then you can check out how he works at his place and the professional standard that he has. We did not use the breaker and I'm very very thankful for Philip being here because I would have blown up my inverter had I not known. He just found this out recently he said but he put the um, an AC voltmeter into the sockets here of the inverter and measured obviously you can get 120 124 volts between these two plugs All right. But when you measure from here to here, you get 100 volts. And from here to here, you get 24 volts. So if I had grounded this to the earth, I might have blown up the inverter. And I hate to take that risk. So I did not, uh, we did not do that. So this is just there for now. Anyway, that's it, everybody. Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Out.